Hello, TEDx. Who is excited about science? Let's hear it. And today we're going to learn about 50 shades of science <laughs> and how deciding science policy based on personal beliefs instead of evidence hurts us all. But before we get to that, I have a big confession. I am an introverted geek. It's true. Thank you. I'm a particular kind of introvert, calls an INTJ, that while I enjoy and need to do things by myself, if you get me talking about something I care about, you can't get me to shut up. <laughs> and I'm not shy, but I'm quiet if thinking or feel like I don't have something worthwhile to say. As an adult, I love and accept who I am. When I was younger, I had a lot of anxiety in group situations and figuring out what to talk about. I had two go-to quotes. Quoting Monty Python, <laughs> and video games. I was so cool. I also had silent crushes on boys and would do cringeworthy things like this. <laughs> Guess what, folks? In real life, stalking is creepy. The greatest aspect of my introversion has always been my imagination. I loved imagining myself a wizard, making friends with dragons, flying off into the unknown, rescuing people, and the dragon and I would fly off together. Didn't care so much about those people. <laughs> and I had big dreams that I'd go out into the world and do things like traveling and live in other countries and that I would push myself physically doing marathons and rock climbing. I dreamed about making delicious and cool-looking cakes. <laughs> and I dreamed about playing the drums. What kind of music? Rock and roll. <laughs> and I dreamed about leading a team and always having fun and being silly. And I dreamed about doing field work in Africa and overcoming some hardships, like recovering from a tropical disease. And importantly, I dreamed about finding an equal partner in life who would accept me just as I am. So why share all this personal stuff? I want you to repeat after me, so me first. Introverted geeks are cool. <laughs> now everybody, introverted geeks are cool, yes. My high school self is so giddy right now. <laughs> Wait for it. Space, the final frontier. Ah, but Kirk had it all wrong. It's actually science, the never-ending frontier. I absolutely love science for the same reasons I loved imagining myself a, a wizard. It's all about having adventures and discovering the unknown but I need your help. My beloved science is in danger. And a big reason is that we often decide science policy based on personal beliefs instead of evidence. For example, I used to debate heatedly with a Republican friend about gun control. I soon realized we're never gonna agree. We're just so different. But we can agree that gun violence is a problem and we should instead focus on the evidence to reduce harm. Now, most of us identify as either Republican or Democrat. And it's a huge mistake when our policy and our health choices are dictated by a political dogma. Now, I'm not discouraging anyone from having personal beliefs, but it's when we impose those beliefs onto others without a basis in science that we do harm. Look at drug policy. Instead of accepting that millions of adults are consuming drugs like MDMA recreationally, we make it illegal and classify it Schedule 1, so it can't be regulated or researched easily. We create the RAVE Act, so clubs and festivals are discouraged from allowing harm reduction practices like drug testing. We treat Americans like horny teenagers. Forbid us and we're not going to do it, right? Well, it hasn't worked for sex, and it hasn't worked for drugs. Personal beliefs dominate politics in this country, largely because we do a bad job of electing people with either the ability 
or the interest to craft evidence-based policy. I'm gonna pick a little on the Republicans. Oh, thank you. It's a big problem. I'm gonna pick a little bit on the Republicans because they made it pretty easy last week, but just, <laughs> just remember that this is a mistake and a problem for everybody, Democrats and Republicans alike. So last week at the debate, the candidates demonstrated that they are not qualified to make uh, and decide science policy. Dr. Ram Paul stated that he's a believer in freedom. So even though science says bunching up vaccines is okay, we ought to have the right to spread them out. Scientists spend decades researching the safest and most effective schedules. Changing this would take decades more research, money, and we'd eventually be right back to where the evidence has led us today. It would be really refreshing to see a politician who understands and debates with real evidence. Last week, Trump told us a story about a baby he knew that got a vaccine, then got a fever, then, called, then got autism. This is called an anecdote. <laughs> In science and statistics, we have another word for it. Bullshit. <laughs> Let's do a better job of electing people who trust in science and who seek out the consensus of the scientific community. Consensus says climate change is real, evolution is real, excellent women's health services at Planned Parenthood is real. When the consensus says something, the government has a responsibility to transcend political lines and act. Now, I could go about solutions for a long time, but let's bring it back to me. I got into research 50, 15 years ago to help people, but my goals are completely hampered by the way we decide science policy in this country. So I pledge to you right now that I will dedicate my career to improving science communication and policy. I will do whatever I can. So remember, whether it be discoveries of galaxies far, far away or of the micro-universe within us, these things are imperative to our survival. Remember, there are 50 plus shades of science, and we force it into a box of either Democrat or Republican, we do much harm. There is hope for us if we refocus our energies on forming evidence-based harm reduction and health promotion policies. And remember what I told you, introverted geeks are cool. I'm Nina Martin, thank you for listening.